This is MathGuide.com and my name is Mark Karadimos. Today I'm going to talk to you about how to solve work problems, but uh, this particular type of work problem is different than the last work problem video that we've posted. Uh, this one has a delayed start. Uh, take into consideration this problem. Here's a pool owner and his name is Jose. Uh, there's two hoses that he could use to fill his pool. His hose will fill the pool in 15 hours. His neighbor's hose will fill the pool in 12 hours. All right, so what I want to do is calculate how much time is it going to take when these two hoses work together to fill the pool. All right, now we've got a video that's like this. Um, now what makes this problem different than the last problem is that we have a delayed start for one of the hoses. So he starts to fill the pool with his hose, and you can see this is the slower hose. It takes 15 hours to fill it, so it's got a must, it must have a weaker stream. His neighbor hose is going to start two hours later. This is the hose that's going to be obviously a thicker stream because it, it only takes 12 hours to fill the pool with that one. So we want to know what happens when he puts his neighbor's hose uh, in the pool two hours after he starts filling it with his own hose. All right, so that's a bit of a complication, right? It's a bit of a wrinkle in this type of problem. All right, uh, in order for us to solve this problem, uh, we're going to use the table that I have down here. Uh, I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to code it like this. I'm going to put a J here for Jose. And I'm going to put an N, and this will represent his neighbor's hose. All right, now, uh, in our last video, we found out that if it takes 15 hours uh, to fill the pool, um, we, we can figure out how much work that hose is doing in one hour. It's just one fifteenth. It's just the reciprocal. Okay, so one fifteenth is how long, or I should say, the rate of the uh, per hour. Okay, just likewise, his neighbor has. Uh, it takes twelve hours to fill the pool. Well, the rate is one twelfth. So that's how much work gets accomplished. One twelfth of the pool gets filled per hour. That's what that means. See our other video to understand it, or our lesson on MathGuide.com talks more about how to come up with that. All right, well, how much time does it take for these two hoses to fill? We don't know. All right, now I'm going to be tricky about this. I'm going to put an X for time. All right, but we both know, you and me, we're reading this problem, and we know that these hoses are not starting at the same time. One hose starts before the other. So you have to ask yourself a question. Which hose spends less time filling the pool? Yep, it's got to be his neighbors. His neighbors started two hours later, right? So you have an option. You could do this. You could say, how much time does the neighbor's hose, uh, hose start, uh, you know, is how much time is it used to complete this job? Well, two hours less time. I don't know how much time it takes, but I know it's going to spend two hours less time because it had it, it didn't start right away. It started two hours after Jose's hose was in the pool. All right, that's one option. The other option is to say, okay, well, look at it a different way. We could say that Jose's hose has been filling the pool for two hours longer because it started filling the pool. So you have this option. You could use a plus two for Jose's time, or you could use a minus two for the neighbor. Now, I always like to stay away from the negatives, so I am going to stick with the plus two. I just like to deal with positives, but you can do the problem with a negative, and you'll get the same answer. All right, now, uh, it turns out that when we try to calculate what's the total amount of work done by these hoses, you simply multiply across. So yes, I'm going to take both of these elements and I'm going to multiply straight across. Okay, so when you multiply straight across, that's going to allow us to calculate for work. All right, so if I'm going to multiply 1 15th by x over 2, I get x, I'm sorry, that is x plus 2. I'm sorry, 1 15th by x plus 2, I get x plus 2 over 15. Okay, because really this is over 1, right? This is over 1, and I'm multiplying two fractions. 
numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. So that's why the x plus 2 goes in the numerator. All right, likewise, remember that's an x over 1. So when I multiply, it's x times 1, and that's going to be 1 times 12. Okay, so it's going to be x over 12. How much total work gets done? One job. They're going to complete, right? They're going to fill one pool total. So that's going to be one. They're doing one job total. Okay, so uh, we've got our setup in our table. Now the job becomes trying to figure out how to make an equation out of this. Well, this column here is going to help us come up with the equation. Well, we know uh, Jose, his uh, hose, this is how much work it does. Let's see, his neighbor, his neighbor's hose does this much work. And it finishes one job, right? They complete one job total. That is filling the pool. So together, right, those two hoses are working together to complete one job. Okay, so that's basically going to be our equation. And now it just becomes uh, doing the algebra required to solve this equation. All right, now I noticed that I can get a common denominator between 15 and 12, and I need to get a common denominator because I'm adding two fractions. And uh, I did a little bit of work ahead of time, and I saw that if I multiply the first fraction by 4 fourths, I'm going to get 60ths. And if I multiply the second fraction by 5 fifths, I'm going to get 60ths here. So in other words, I'm telling you that the lowest common denominator is 60ths. All right, so I multiply the numerator, 4 times the x plus 2, uh, and, I, and I get that over 60. And then over here, I multiply 3, I'm sorry, 5 times x, and 5 times 12 is 60. There you go. See, I got my common denominator. So you can see that my whole problem here on the left side, if I write everything together, right, if I get the 4 times x, 4 times 2, that's right, 4x plus 8, that's all over 60. And I got the 5x, that's all over 60. Now I'm going to add them together, all over 60. I did a couple steps there in 1 because I'm a little low on space, I'm trying to make use of my space here. But I did the distributive property. And because they're both in 60ths, I'm writing these two fractions together. All right, the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to find a way to get rid of this 60. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation. I'm going to multiply the left side by 60. And I'm going to multiply the right side by 60. And you can see that that's going to cancel the 60s here on the left side. So what do I get? I'm going to get, uh, let's see, 4x plus 8 plus 5x equals 60. All right, so that's what I get there when I do a little bit of algebra. Again, I'm running out of space, so I'm going to pick this problem up, and I'm going to bring it up, bring it right down here. I need way more work here, way more space to do this work. All right, so uh, let's see, 4x, 5x, I know that's 9x, plus 8 equals 60. Okay, got that. Now what I'm going to do is, to finish doing the algebra there, I'm going to subtract 8. Subtract 8. I'm going to write small so I could squeeze it all uh, on there. Uh, okay, so that's 8 and minus 8. They'll cancel. So what do I get? I get 9x equals 52. All right, now i got to divide by something to get rid of this 9. So I'm going to divide both sides by 9. Okay, so what do I get here? I'm going to get... Uh, it turns out I'm going to get the answer. So uh, 
I did this work with a calculator a moment ago, and it turns out it's 5.78. I round it to the nearest hundredths. It's repeating sevens, but I'll just round it to the nearest hundredth. So we could see that it's going to take five hours uh, to do this. We could see, let's see, 0 0.78, yeah, 0.75, that's three quarters of an hour, which would be 45 minutes. So I could see that this is going to be more than 45 minutes. But if you take 0 0.78 times 60, you'll actually get 47, close to 47 minutes. Okay, so it takes 5 hours and 47 minutes. Now remember, that's what X stands for. Okay, remember, X. Well, and the way I set up this problem, and this is where you really have to be careful when you're doing this problem, is that, remember, X stands for the hum, uh, amount of time that his neighbor's hose is, is working on this problem, filling the, the pool. So his neighbor's hose needs to be in that pool 5 hours and 47 minutes. But you have to remember that Jose started filling up the pool with his hose two hours before that. Remember? He put his hose in there first. So how much time does his hose uh, spend filling the pool? And that would be seven hours and 47 minutes. So that's how long a time it takes. If we're looking at the total amount of time it takes to complete this job, that would mean from the time the first hose enters the pool and starts to work. So that was two hours more than our answer. So it turns out that it takes seven hours and 47 minutes to get the total time it takes. So that's what I'm going to put here. I'm going to put this in this color. So seven hours, 47 minutes. You've got to be really careful with time because we do have two different times depending on which hose we're talking about. So that's how much time it takes for this particular scenario. Seven hours, 47 minutes. All right, so make sure you go to mathguide.com, check out our interactive quizzes, all their lessons and videos, and activities. Take care.